Hi, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can combine data from multiple files into a single Excel file where the source files are stored in a SharePoint library. I'm going to use Excel files as the source, but it works equally as well for other file types such as CSV. In Excel for Windows, it's simple. You can select Get Data from File and then select SharePoint Folder. But at the time of recording this video, Excel for Mac doesn't have that option. Excel for Mac does have an option to import data from a SharePoint list, but not a SharePoint library. In this example, I have three Excel files stored in a library in a SharePoint site. Each file contains information about employees, one file per country, and I need to combine the data from those three files into a single file. This is the Excel file that I'm going to combine the other files into. I've named it All Employees, and it can be stored in SharePoint or on a local drive. Before I can import the data into this file, I need the URL of the SharePoint site. Not the folder name, just the root URL. That's this bit here, up to training. Training is the name of the site. HR is the name of the library within the site where the files are stored. Back in Excel, click on data on the ribbon and then click get data power query. And then click on blank query. What we're looking at now is the raw M code. M is the language that's used to create a query. A query is a set of instructions that tells Excel how to connect to an external data source. Most of the time, we don't see the M code because we're using the nice friendly interface of the editor. As we click the buttons on the query editor ribbon, Excel writes the code for us. But because Excel for Mac doesn't have a nice friendly menu to connect to a SharePoint library, we have to write the M code manually. What I need to do is remove the double quotes and paste or type this code after source equals and then click Next. At this point, you might be prompted to enter your credentials. This is typically the username and password that you'd use to gain access to the SharePoint site. If you want to maximize the query editor, just double click on its title bar. After you've been prompted for the credentials, if you are prompted for the credentials, you'll see a table that looks something like this. The table contains one row for each library in the site. As I'm only interested in the HR library, I'll filter out the rest. And I'll do that by clicking on the drop down arrow for the name column, unticking select all, and just ticking HR and clicking OK. If you're not familiar with Power Query, that's an example of using the nice friendly interface and it writing the M code for you. I'll also just widen a couple of these columns so that you can actually see the column names. The next step is to click the double headed arrow to the right of the content column heading and click OK. This displays a table containing the names of all the files in the HR library. I'll just widen that name column. It's actually called name one, but those are the file names. And then on the home tab of the query editor, over on the right hand side of the ribbon, click combine files. As I said earlier, not only do all the files in the library have the same structure, they also have the data in a sheet called Sheet 1. Although you can combine files where the sheet name containing the data is different in each file, your life will be much easier if all the files have the same sheet name, in this case, Sheet 1. So I'm going to click on Sheet 1, and Power Query displays a preview of the data. If you're wondering why it's picked Italy, by the way, in the example file dropdown, it's selected first file. That's the default. The files are called Spain, UK and Italy. And first file means first in an alphabetical list. Finally, click OK. 
And that's it. The data from the three files is combined. If I want to perform other transformations on the data, I can. For example, I could put the list into alphabetical order on surname. To do that, click the drop down arrow against surname and click sort ascending. Once the data is how I want it, I'll close the query editor. On the home tab, you've got a button that says close and load. If you receive this alert message, just click on OK. Power Query has generated multiple sheets. I can actually delete all the sheets except the one called Query. The one called Query contains the actual data. So I'll just go through and delete all the other sheets. And I'll rename the one called Query and call that one Employee List. Finally, let's have a look at what happens if the data changes. I've updated the UK Excel file. I've changed one record. Brian Baker has a salary of 50,000. And I've also added another uh, record, another employee. You can see I've added myself at the bottom. I've also added another file into the SharePoint library. This file contains details of the employees located in the newly opened office in France. So if I right click on any cell in this table and click on refresh, what Excel will do is it will rerun the query in the background. So it will combine all the files together that are in that library, now including the France file, and it will also change the salary for Brian Baker. So there we can see that Brian Baker's salary is 50,000. And because this list is in alphabetical order on surname, you can see that he's added me in the correct position based on my surname. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.